and welcome to my review of the next batch of episodes. Although, to be honest, I didn't really got to watch the previous episodes. I just watched episode 10 and I can't remember the rest. But I cannot say that episode 3 was a nice conclusion to all what happened. I wonder why did they give it with 3 episodes and not 2. But yeah, Liko get her chair back and, and access about this so is the school setup. Because at the end of the episode, they're going to Paldia with a little D to, to say before that. And in these 10 episodes, it just mentioned that they have school and all that, but why in the first place need that? They could as well just chat with their friends that they're left behind. The idea of Pokemon is that you start your journey at 10. You can go anywhere in the world. Look at S. You know, maybe they are actually trying to add school to remember kids that hey, you still have school, but this is fantasy. And I still ha have to see where this school set is gonna go. Consider that, again, the counter school is pointless. What was the deal with that? And the next particular arc, that is episode 5 to 7, has the crew castle to Roy's Island. Well, we meet the new, the second protagonist, Roy that he has a Pokeball that has a Sunny Rayquaza. And I'm pretty for so far, Roy's goal is to cast this Sunny Rayquaza that just go right in Paldia at the end of this episode. I don't know why, I hope we get the answer, but in the same time, Roy somehow doesn't give me protagonist energy. He has a goal, but he's kinda blinded by anything else. Kinda like, Go, but not with the sarcasm, you see. He's kind of goofball, you see. And yeah, he gets Fue Coco. And oh yeah, in this episode we discover who is Ko, although I guess Ko is the name of the new arena in the translation, but I guess I'm gonna call him Ko, although we knew he her real name. That is an episode 2 about who is behind the message. I'm kind of surprised because Usually, the, nowadays, everyone is revealed who's gonna be in this show, but we have this secret character that no one mentioned until we actually saw in the episode. Oh, another thing that I kind of find funny when I watch this sub is that Chance is called Lucky. Oh yeah, the bad guy is trying to get back to kidnap Rico, and here's another odd thing, because that's gonna be kind of in my list of deep picks so far. Liko has a fight, an actual fight with one of the dancing. She wins. Off screen. To be honest, I'm not to feel too good about this because nobody is uh, gonna do this kind of writing. But yeah, they get away and yeah, the good crew and Liko Roy join the team again and they go to Paldia. Ah, episode 8 kind of is uh, interesting because it has some kind of subplot at the beginning and at the end about that, aka Cole. And another thing that kinda notice is that episode is kinda derailed, like I guess they're gonna have a main goal to go to this place or that place and in between they're gonna have some kinda issue why they have to stop here and stop here and so I hope there is not gonna be so occurrence because this is has the feeling of a venture. I don't see this covering 50 episodes consider a Pokemon goes for more than 100 plus episodes so, I guess we may have another plot, or plot's gonna reveal something on top of it. Who can tell? But I guess by the end we instill in Paldia. And I hope it's not gonna be just this arc and never see Paldia again until the end to say visit her parents and say goodbye. Oh yeah, the last episode are kinda interesting because episode 9 is kinda was supposed to be the end of Liko's journey so far, at least. You know, the crew was hired by her mother, that we still don't see her yet, or meet. And Liko still tries to go with the crew. Although curious if her mother is gonna be revealed to her, to have some kind of reason, but in the same time. If you are the parent that hired to get her back, because of the pander, why send her to Kanto? So far, I mean, if you change the scenario from Roy, from episode 1 to 3, her being changed the other side of Paldia at the school and give it the same plot. Episode 10 we have Nemona and the girls team leader. 
and they send them to the next point of the journey. And that's all what to say much about this episode. I mean, they're entertaining to say the least, and yeah, something progressing to some extent. But there's something about that I have to say because I have a nitpick list, and I do not say that nitpick matters to some degree if the nitpicks gather and gather so long. And one of those be country in general, the school in general. Why do they need to go so far? The odd writing, they have like Rico's mother not explained well, consider that she's a major point of the story. So I guess it's gonna be my overall review of these episodes. Some stuff happened, but they are in for progressing the story. Nothing major happens yet. Aside, aside from signing Requesa. But somehow they call it Black Requesa. Like, this is something that I now want to say that it's kinda wants to be an adventure. Actually, kinda similar to Ghost Key. The brand is there, but it feels something totally different that can work without the brand. Ghost game can work as well with just simply your guys and not this one. Similar to Hill. Because, I don't know, they have this scenario with Black and Crazy. Consider that that is a sign of normal request that it exists. Legendary exists to some degrees. I'm not sure what they're gonna do with this concept, like this sign is somehow important to the sign or something like that. And I'm curious, why do I Crazy? It means they didn't have yet a concept for the third Pokemon yet. Oh wait, that was... that could be the third actually, and... No... Although I feel like where's the... it's gonna be some kind of bait. But that's kinda all I hope to say about this episode. It's kinda give us the... how it's gonna go. Hope that next episode they're gonna go on more. So, hope you enjoy this and see you in the next episode.